We hear of a number of pharmaceutical drugs that get pulled off the market, it seems, on a week-to-week, month-to-month basis uh, because they're dangerous. Why aren't those things caught in the many, many years of, of testing, and why is it waiting until people are actually harmed by these drugs that it gets noticed and pulled? Well, a lot of people are surprised to learn that the Food and Drug Administration does no testing of drugs. Hmm. It does not test drugs, and it does not... Uh, um, uh, test drugs for safety or for efficacy. Instead, it asks the drug companies that submit the drug applications to perform their own safety testing and their own efficacy testing. Of course, they have an inherent conflict of interest. They have an interest in avoiding communication of information that suggests a safety mm -hmm. problem and maximizing the information that suggests that the product is efficacious. And so, the drug reviewers, the medical reviewers at FDA are disabled because they receive this information and they have to evaluate everything on paper. They don't uh, have the wherewithal from either the FDA, Congress, or otherwise the statute doesn't provide for it, for them to do their own independent testing and assessment mm -hmm. of these drugs. So uh, frequently they never see the actual substance. They don't even know what the drug is they're dealing with. They just see the paper reports that come to the agency as part of the application. Okay, these uh, reports, even with this, many of these medical review reviewers are quite savvy. And it is uh, not the case that FDA approves a drug uh, in the ordinary course unaware of the risks. They frequently are informed by the medical reviewers of those risks. We can take a good example of that. Uh, in the case of Avan or, uh, Vioxx, mm -hmm. the Merck drug Vioxx, in the Merck application for Vioxx, Merck compared Vioxx with another uh, uh, pain reliever called naproxen. Now, based on the data in the information they submitted and reconstructing it, the medical reviewers were able to show that Vioxx had a five times, three to five times higher risk for cardi adverse cardiac events, heart attack, and also stroke, than the competing product that was in the comparative trials that were submitted as part of the application, naproxen. When queried about this, uh, Merck said, cutely, that it wasn't that Vioxx was significantly more toxic to the heart than naproxen, it was that naproxen was unusually beneath par as far as risk to cardiac events and that really a Vioxx was at par. The relative risk was not higher than was ordin would ordinarily be expected. This was nonsense, but it didn't matter because the determination of, to approve a drug is a political determination. It's always made by the commissioner of the FDA, one person, the FDA is a dictatorship, Commissioner of the FDA can overrule the scientists, even if they're 100% opposed to approval of a drug, if he or she wants to, and frequently they do. They set up their own review panels. The commissioner has direct input in choosing who's on the review panels, and conflicts of interest are routinely waived. The commissioner knows by who he or she chooses to be on a panel the likelihood of how they will vote on approval. And so these things are stacked, and the bias is, is set, and it's well established that there is such a bias. There have been surveys, and there have been uh, um, uh, inspector general reports and so forth, all evaluating this corrupt system. It does nothing. Congress never changes it. The FDA certainly doesn't do anything to change it. Mm -hmm. So with Vioxx, the drug was put on the market, and true to form, as the medical reviewers suspected, it increased the risk of heart toxicity, so much so that there were 140,000 heart attacks caused by Vioxx, and there were 60,000 deaths caused by Vioxx from heart attack. Uh, 60,000 is a number comparable to the number of people who died in the Vietnam War, all from a pain reliever that had multiple substitutes in the market. FDA put it out on the market, gave it a, its typical push as a breakthrough drug, it was considered a superior pain reliever, and it was used in hospitals all over the United States and all over the world as a routine pain reliever, uh, post-surgical pain reliever. And uh, it was inducing these heart attacks. The frequency of the heart attacks was so great, the doctors were uh, concerned and uh, began to do scientific research. And it resulted in uh, peer-reviewed studies that were published in Lancet and JAMA, establishing that Vioxx was ex uh, heart toxic, was very dangerous, 
and significantly increase your risk of heart attack and stroke. Uh, this information was presented by the medical reviewers to the FDA commissioner, who was then Lester Crawford, and he was told also of the existence of numerous adverse event reports. There were tens of thousands of adverse event reports coming in about Vioxx. He overruled their objections, didn't take any measure to take the drug off the market, and, and in fact declared that the information was anecdotal and that he, would, he believed in the product and thought it was a good drug keep it on and want to keep it on the market. Not only that, within two weeks prior to uh, Merck withdrawing the drug from the market on its own against an avalanche of products liability suits, uh, Lester Crawford approved the drug for use in pediatric rheumatoid arthritis patients, for the use in kids, even in the presence of this massive evidence of heart attack. What happened to Lester Crawford? Well, he left the agency in disgrace because he failed to answer his government employment forms correctly. He had uh, ownership interests in pharmaceutical company stock and in uh, large food companies, which are regulatees of the FDA. Ordinarily, they put that into a blind trust, or they assign it, or they sell it before they get into office. He apparently didn't want to do that. It was under his wife's name, but it's cogni a cognizable interest because it's still recognizable mm -hmm. to him, even if he put it under his wife's name or his wife had it. Uh, and so he answered no to the question, do you have a cognizable ownership interest um, in regulated uh, company stock? The FDA approached, or the FBI approached him about it. He had, was given, as they oftentimes do, they bend over backwards to accommodate these government officials. Uh, excuse me, sir, are you absolutely sure that your answer to this question is correct? Uh, do you think that you ought to change the answer to yes to this question? It's under penalty of perjury. It would be a false statement if it's untrue. Nope, I don't want to hear any more of this. I don't have any cognizable interest in the stock. So he forced the government's hand in the Justice Department. He was charged with false statements under the False Statements Act. And, and so, uh, uh, but as is oftentimes the case, he settled the, the difficulty with the government, paid him a couple hundred thousand dollars, and then popped out into the private sector where he went to work for a company called Policy Directions, Inc., which is a lobbying firm in Washington, and it represents, among others, Merck, which is the maker of Vioxx, and he received a very handsome salary, much greater uh, than he received as a commissioner of the FDA. He's doing quite well today as well. So it, it's, um, you know, it's, it's a rare circumstance when a person can knowingly uh, uh, cause 140,000 heart attacks or countenance them and countenance 60,000 deaths, and then even go to the point of advocating that the very drug that's causing this be used in children with you know, rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the course of events, uh, and this is not uh, atypical. Let me just give you two quick examples. Ketek is a Santa Via Ventus drug that's an antibiotic, super antibiotic. Uh, the medical reviewers, when they were looking at the Ketek drug, discovered that um, one primary clinical trial upon which the uh, Santa Via Ventus relied for approval of Ketek looked too perfect. It just seemed too pristine, and their experience with other uh, antibiotic drug applications gave them pause to think that perhaps something's remiss here. I mean, it's just too, too pristine. So they asked them to supply the agency with empirical, the empirical data underlying the trial, basically, who are all the patients, um, where are their informed consents? We want to see them. Uh, show us uh, the data, upon the value of data as it's taking place uh, for each of these um, testing centers, and, uh, and we'll evaluate that to double check your uh, assessment. Well, the information they requested wasn't forthcoming. It made them seriously suspicious that perhaps there wasn't a clinical trial. The FBI investigated and discovered that it was a fraud, that they made up the clinical trial, that uh, there was no clinical trial uh, performed. And this was a key trial supporting the uh, claims of efficacy for the drug and the very claims that they were seeking about this super antibiotic. In addition, the medical reviewers found troubling information about toxicity, uh, liver toxicity from the drug. And they recommended the commissioner, in light of the fraud, that it be summarily denied, the application. The commissioner, however, had other uh, view in mind and ignored the fraud and ordered that the uh, application continue to be processed and then approved the application. 
even though it was based on fraud, and then uh, authorized in the indications for the drug um, indications that were based on the fraudulent clinical trial. That drug is in the marketplace now carrying those indications, and it is causing the liver toxicity problems. There are adverse event reports coming in about Ketek with regularity. Hmm. Um, and you know there are other instances too, but this gives you a good idea. Uh, David Graham, who's the associate director of the FDA Office of Drug Safety, has been bold in his whistleblowing about the FDA. Here he is in that position, very high position, and with full knowledge of this whole process. And he has said frankly that uh, the FDA considers the drug industry its client, that it will approve as many drugs as it can, regardless of whether they're safe or effective.